Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the next video for uh, lecture note series for ESE 551. Okay, in the previous uh, video, we have completed on the sketching part of the root locus. So now we are ready to go to the design uh, compensator part using root locus. And um, and in this section, I will focus on the design of lag compensator or PI compensator. Okay. Uh, these are the outcomes expected from this uh, the design part of uh, compensator from using root locus method. Okay, so basically, uh, you will learn to design two types of compensators, uh, which are PI and lag compensator. Uh, this compensator is suitable to improve steady state error, while the second type of compensator is PB and lag compensators, and this compensator is suitable to improve constant response. In the previous video, I have uh, demonstrated to you that we can actually design the constant response of the system um, by gain adjustment. So why do we need additional compensators? If you recall, if you use a gain adjustment, we can only design the system to have closed loop poles lie along the root locus. But if you want the system to operate with desired performance beyond the root locus, such as point B shown here, then we need additional compensator. Okay, if we look at this root locus, uh, uh, the blue lines is the root locus. If we want to design anything uh, on the root locus, then we can use gain adjustment. But if we want to design the system performance to be at B, we cannot use gain adjustment only. We have to add a compensator to the system so that the root locus will change and go through point B. Before we proceed, let me introduce to you two types of uh, compensation configuration available in control system. Um, figure A show uh, con uh, co cascade compensation configuration. If you look at here, the, com the compensator is designed to be in cascade with the original system, which is the controller and the plan. While figure B show another type of com compensation configuration known as feedback compensation. If you look at the block diagram, you can see that the compensator is designed to be on the feedback path. In this course, we will only focus on the cascade compensator. In designing control system, there are three main objectives that we want to achieve. The first one is to improve the steady state error. So, uh, what does it mean by to improve steady state error? That we might want the system to have smaller steady state error or maybe zero steady state error. Second objective is to improve the transient response. Uh, this, what does it mean by this? Is maybe we want the system to have faster settling time or maybe smaller percentage of shoot and then the third objective is the combinations of the previous two which is to improve steady state error and also the transient response for every uh, design objective uh, mentioned in the previous slide actually there is uh, uh, types of compensator which is suitable to achieve the objective. For steady state improvement, uh, the types of compensator that can be used is PI or lag compensator. 
Okay, while for the transient response improvement, the suitable compensator can be PD or decompensator. And for the transient response and steady state improvement, the suitable compensator can be PID or lead lead compensator. Note that P is stand for proportional, I is stand for integral, and D is stand for derivative mode. In this uh, video, I will focus on the first part of the design objective, which is to improve uh, steady state error. These two figures show the physical realizations of PI compensator and lag compensator. PI compensator is known as ideal uh, integral compensator because it uses OPAM in the circuit. Um, the presence of this OPAM uh, enables the circuit to eliminate the error uh, totally, while the light compensator only uses passive components, in this case resistor and capacitor, because of this the circuit is unable to eliminate the error, but uh, it is possible to reduce the error, which by choosing suitable values of the uh, passive components. Later in this video, uh, I will teach you on how to design light compensator using uh, control system theory, uh, the physical realization behind the theory is you have to adjust the components value in order to uh, place the compensator poles and zero. To illustrate the effect of improving steady state error uh, to the control system, let us look at this figure. So the dotted line shows the uh, unit step input and the black line shows the system response or the uncompensated system response. If you observe at the final value, you will see that there is a difference between the input and the output. Uh, then this difference is what we call as steady state error. So what does it mean uh, if we want to improve the steady state error is we want to reduce the amount of the difference here. So uh, the blue line shown in this figure is the compensated um, system response using ideal integral which is the PI controller. So from here we can see that uh, the final value of the system response is uh, uh, similar to the input value. Uh, uh, this indicates that the error is zero. First, let us look at the uh, PI controller. Uh, using PI controller, we use pure integrator, uh, meaning that we need to use active components such as OPAM to build the compensator. So using this controller, we're actually placing a pole at the origin. By doing this, we actually increase the system type by one and thus the error is reduced to zero. Uh, I will explain further in the next slide. Okay, uh, to illustrate the idea of implementing the eye controller to a control system, let us consider a system with uh, three poles on the left-hand side of S-plane. Let us denote the poles to be at minus P1, minus P2, and minus P3. And from transfer function, we know that the system is type 0. So the blue line shows the root locus of the system. Okay. The idea of implementing PI controller to a control system is to add a pole at the origin. So this is the pole. So this pole is denoted as a PC. Okay. So as you add a pole to the origin, note that the root locus now uh, has changed from this to this. 
This is because the uh, poles at the origin uh, is numbered as 1. And now the uh, the first pole now be, uh, is numbered as 2, 3 and 4. So if you still remember, root locus exists to the odd numbered poles and 0 on lies on the real axis. So now the root locus exists here and here. And then since all are, are start points, so the root locus will split. Okay, this branch will split into two and this branch also will split into two. So, um, we, uh, as adding a pole to the system, the shape of your root locus has significantly changed. Now, note that the uh, SD, point A, is our operating uh, dominant poles. SD is no longer on the root locus. When this happens, it means that the transient response of the system also significantly change. Okay, so uh, for us to operate at point A, we have to add another zero. So like here, so now we have a uh, compensator poles at origin and we have another poles compensator zero uh, uh, nearby to the poles. And the idea is the zero must be placed very close to the pole so that it won't change uh, the transient response or the root locus of the system uh, significantly. So as we do that, now the shape of the root locus is change, uh, changing back to uh, similar to the original shape. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, if, you, if we look at in the perspective of steady, uh, steady state error, so uh, from the transfer function, uh, we calculate the corresponding uh, steady error constant. In this case, is Kp because the system is at zero. So Kp will be K divided by P1 times P2 times P3. This will give you a, a steady state error. Okay. However, as we add a pole, uh, lead com a PI compensator to the system, we are adding a zero term here and a poles at the origin. So now the KP is become K times ZC times zero times P1 times P2 times P3, uh, which is equals to infinity. So the steady state error is now one over one plus KP will give you zero steady state error. So in this sense, uh, we can see that adding a PI compensator to the system is actually eliminating the error from the system. Okay, so uh, I hope you get the idea on how to eliminate uh, error using PI controller. Now let us look at the second type of compensator that can be used to improve steady state error, which is lag compensator. Uh, lag compensator use passive network, so we cannot place a pole at the origin, but we can place a pole close to origin. Since the uh, compensator poles is not at the origin, it do not increase the system type, thus eliminate the zero. However, it is uh, able to improve the steady state error uh, significantly. So this is the transfer functions of a uh, lag compensator. It has a zero on the left side of the S plane and also it has a pole also on the left side of the S plane. If we plot the compensator pole and the compensator zero, you will have uh, a poles and a zero and always the locations of the pole is much closer to the origin compared to the uh, compensator zero. This is the characteristic of that compensator. For further explanation, let us look at an example. So let's consider a control system with this uh, root locus. The uh, figure A show the uncompensated root locus. The system has three poles on the left-hand side of the S-plane 
and the transfer function is written here. So it is k over s plus p1 plus, uh, times s plus p2 times s plus p3. And if you calculate the corresponding static error constant, kp, because the system is start zero system, so you will get the uncompensated kp or kp old is equals to k divided by p1 times p2 and times p3. Okay. Now, if we add a lag compensator to the system, what? Uh, so as shown here, so we have additional uh, pole and zero denoted as PC and ZC. So this is uh, uh, to indicate that we have add a lag compensator to the system. So now the transfer function has additional zero k s plus ZC over s plus PC times s plus p1 times s plus p2 times s plus p3. So if you calculate the compensated uh, static error constant, kp nu, so you will get have additional term on the numerator, which is zc, and an, uh, 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 another term pc on the denominator. Okay. As I mentioned um, previously in the previous slide, so the locations of ZC must always be on the left hand side of the PC. Thus, the value of ZC is greater than PC. Um, therefore, uh, KPN or this term must be greater than KPO. Okay. Um, this give you kp nu is less than k sorry um, okay, since kp nu is greater than kp old therefore uh, new statistic error must be less than uh, old statistic error so from this we can see that adding uh, lag compensator to the system we reduce the state steady state error. Uh, if you uh, divide the expressions of kp nu over kp old, so this term divide by this term, and you can cancel out the k p1, p2, p3, left you with zc over pc. So this equation we will use later in the design procedure for light compensator. To design light compensator using root lockers, we will follow this procedure. Uh, so there are seven steps here uh, and I will um, demonstrate how to go through this procedure using an example uh, in the next slide. To demonstrate on how to design that compensator using the locus uh, method, I will use this example. Um, so let us read the question. Uh, given to you the system where the open loop transfer function is k over s plus 1 times s plus 2 times s plus 10. So improve the steady state error by a factor of 10 if the system is operating with damping ratio of 0 0.174 and settling time of 5.76 and I will explain on how to answer this question uh, and go through the design procedure shown in the previous slide. The first step in the design procedure is to sketch the uncompensated root locus. So, if you follow the basic rules um, uh, of the of sketching root lockers, you will get your root lockers uh, something like this, uh, and the value of the asymptote is as shown here. The second step is to find the dominant poles from the specification given uh, in the question. So, from the questions uh, given. 
damping ratio is equals to 0 0.174 and settling time is 5.76. So to calculate the dominant poles, you can use this formula. This is from chapter 1 and uh, damping ratio is given to you and you have to calculate the natural frequency using the settling time uh, value given to you. So if you calculate the uh, natural frequency, you will get 3.99. And if you substitute the value of uh, damping ratio and the natural frequency into the uh, damping ratio formula, uh, sorry, the dominant force formula, you will get your dominant force values to be at minus 0 0.694 plus minus 3.93. Uh, step 3 is to calculate the gain uh, at the dominant poles and then once you have the k value then you can calculate the uncompensated static error constant value. Okay, so from the uh, step 2 we have obtained the dominant poles value at this point and using magnitude criterion you can find the value of k. So, K, uh, if you calculate, you will get your K is equals to 164.9 uh, uh, angle minus 179.9 degree. So, this angle value, which is uh, almost 180 degree, indicates that the SD is uh, on the root of this. Okay, uh, using the k-value obtained, you can calculate your static error constant. In this case, is kp. Uh, and I denote this as kpo because it is for the uncompensated static error constant. So you will get 8.245. Then use this value of kp uh, to calculate the uncompensated static state error value. Uh, you will get your uncompensated statistic error value or E old uh, equals to 0 0.11. Okay, so from the question, uh, we uh, know that we need to improve the statistic error by a factor of 10. So uh, in step 4, we have to calculate the stat uh, the compensated static error constant. So we know that uh, we have to improve the statistic error by a factor of 10. So E new, which is the compensated uh, error, equals to E old divided by 10. Why divided by 10? Because uh, we want to reduce the error. So we have to divide by 10, not to multiply by 10. If you multiply the error by 10, it will be bigger. So uh, the objective of our design is to improve the steady state error, meaning that to reduce the steady state error. So your new steady state error must be smaller compared to the old steady state error. So, um, so you, you divide it by 10, uh, and then you will get 0 0.011. And then uh, you need to find the, K, the corresponding static error constant or KP new. And using this equation, you will get your KP new equals to 89.1. Okay, step five is to choose the locations of um, uh, P, uh, P, uh, P, uh, compensator poles and compensator zero. And you must choose this value to be near to the origin to make sure that the compensation does not appreciably change the transient response. So in this case, I have arbitrarily choose PC to be at 0 0.01. You can choose any value as long as the value is close to the origin and it must be a negative value because it must be on the left hand side of your S plane. So now, uh, since we have choose PC to be at 0 0.01 uh, we can proceed to find the corresponding uh, uh, compensator zero location using this formula okay so this formula i have shown in the previous slide so we will use that formula uh, 
Then since we know the KP new value, the KP old value, and also the PC value, so we should get our ZC value. So in this case, our ZC is uh, at minus 0 0.108. Okay. And then for lag compensator, the compensator gain is 1. Is one because uh, the PC and the ZC that we choose do not change the root locus appreciably, this does not change the gain. Okay. So uh, finally, uh, uh, I draw this just to show you that the design compensator uh, is designed to be in cascade with the original system. So we have the original system for the transfer function is this and then this is our lag compensator that we just designed where the ZC is at 0 0.108 and the PC is at 0 0.01. So the compensator transfer function is uh, GC times GS. So this is the compensator transfer function. So I think that's all for this example. So with that, I end this video. Um, later, I will post some question uh, for your exercise. Thank you.